waging war on corruption. Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. We now take you live to the Central Texas Command Center and the heart of the resistance. Rallying patriots worldwide. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. Welcome to The Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight. I'll be the host today. We have got a lot of breaking news. We've got Piers Morgan finally leaving. <laughs> Don't let the door hit you on the way out, Piers. And we got Mike Rogers, the apologist, the cheerleader for the NSA. He's leaving Congress. You know, he's head of the Senate Intelligence Committee, but he's leaving Congress. And where is he going? Talk radio. Yeah, that's going to be real interesting, isn't it? We've also got uh, some ironies that we're going to bring up again about this California gun grabber who actually turned out to be a gun runner. Sounds a lot like Eric Holder's false and furious, doesn't it? Except that it looks like this guy may be headed to jail. We've also got some GOP neocons heading to Las Vegas, hoping they're going to hit the jackpot with Sheldon Adelson. And uh, if they kiss his ring, maybe he's going to give them a lot of money. He's got a lot of money to put in. In the last cycle, he gave $93 million to the presidential election. Now, to put that in perspective, going back to the year 2000, that's about what Al Gore spent on the presidential election. I think uh, Bush spent about 200. So things have really changed. Of course, that's just, uh, you know, $100, $100 million. That's not all that much now when the candidates are spending a billion dollars apiece, as they both did uh, approximately in the last election in 2012, Obama and Romney. But it's enough to get these guys coming there and kissing your finger. And they had a lot to say about how we should be more proactive, how we should involve ourselves more in wars. It was a neocon wing of the Republican Party that was there to talk to Sheldon Adelson because that's what he, he's interested in funding. And if you remember the 2012 elections, there were a lot of shenanigans in Nevada, especially in the Vegas. That was the largest caucus in Nevada. And there were a lot of shenanigans going on there as he hijacked that whole thing or attempted to hijack it. It went on for quite some time. We're not going to get into all of that, but we're going to tell you what happened at the meeting this weekend. We've also got uh, Noah that was headed to the theaters, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. And we see that the mainstream media is still heading to the bottom of the heap. And we're going to talk a little bit more about these re revelations that came out in Turkey. Now, again, YouTube was shut down last week as a video surfaced showing Turkish officials plotting a false flag attack so they could start a war with Syria. And, of course, today... There are elections going on in Turkey. They've they finished. They're now counting the uh, ballots. I think eight people have been killed in violence there around the election. It's a very troublesome area. They're trying to push into war with Syria. It seems to be like they're NATO's last gasp. And, of course, when this false flag information surfaced, the mainstream media went out of its way to avoid talking about what was actually said. They just focused on the fact that YouTube had been shut down just as they had shut down Twitter. It's a very important thing to look at how these mainstream media outlets, the BBC, the LA Times, Fox News had an amazing summary of this story. So we're going to be taking a look at all of that. And we've got a lot of news about drones and new autonomy. We've got breaking health news. And we're going to be taking your calls. And let me give you that number because the Sunday number is a little bit different. It is 877 789 Alex. That's 877-789-ALEX. Now, one of the things that we've been talking about and we've been concerned about, of course, is metadata. And it's not this harmless thing that Mike Rogers and others like to make it out to be. It's actually a very dangerous thing. But, you know, you can have a very crude form of metadata that can still get you into trouble with the police. Take this story that happened in Idaho. This is a 70-year-old man who was driving from Colorado. He's, he's in, he lives in Colorado. He's got Colorado tags. And he was driving to his home in Washington State. And he was pulled because he had Colorado tags. And he was given the once-over looking for marijuana just because he's from Colorado. You talk about meta tags, <laughs> metadata. This is old school metadata, old school profiling. But we're going to talk about that and what the real stuff is coming up right after the break. Stay tuned. We've got a lot of news.
Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico, where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure the sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee. And it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great-tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. Renewed hostile actions against United States ships on the high seas in the Gulf of Tonkin have today required me to order the military forces of the United States to take action in reply. Dr. Martin Luther King, the apostle of nonviolence in the civil rights movement, has been shot to death in Memphis, Tennessee. Senator Kennedy has been shot. Is that possible? He still has the gun. The gun is pointed at me right at this moment. People calling themselves members of the Weather Underground last night planted bombs in federal office buildings in Washington and Oakland, California. They took the babies out of incubators and left the children to die on the cold floor. Survivors of the USS Liberty are demanding a congressional investigation into what happened and acknowledgement that the Israeli Air Force bombed a U.S. intelligence Navy ship. The death of bin Laden marks the most significant achievement to date in our nation's effort to defeat al-Qaeda. The Taliban is taking responsibility for shooting down a U.S. helicopter. More than 30 people were killed, and there are reports this morning that most of them are U.S. Navy SEALs. There may be a false flag incident where some uh, ship goes down and you be used for the excuse to accelerate the next war. If there's one thing that has unified Democrats and Republicans and everybody in between, is that we all hated the bank bailout. The Department of Homeland Security is apparently on a huge ammo buying spree. It comes out to like 1.6 billion rounds of ammunition. Today, it is infinitely easier to kill a million people than to control a million people. They estimated that they would have to eliminate 25 million people in these re-education centers. And when I say eliminate, I mean kill. I'm here to warn people. You keep telling me to shut up. This isn't a game. From the front lines of the information war, it's Alex Jones. Welcome to the Alex Jones Show on this Sunday, March 30th. I'm David Knight. I'm going to be your host today, and I'm going to be taking your calls. Let me give you that number. It's 877-789-ALEX. Now, I was just talking just before the break about the news about the man who was arrested, 70-year-old man who was arrested looking for marijuana solely because he had a Colorado license plate. Now, this was an Idaho state trooper who pulled him over. He was on his way to another home in Washington state. He has a Colorado tag, says that the uh, trooper pulled out immediately as he passed, rapidly accelerated to him. The complaint states when he pulled him over that the uh, trooper asked him why his eyes were appearing glassy, and he asked him for various other stuff, but then kept asking to search the vehicle. Finally, the guy said... He refused at first, but finally gave him permission to search the vehicle after he threatened to bring a drug-sniffing dog and hold him until it got there. And he said when he did, despite the strong gusts of wind and precipitation that day, this is a lawsuit, this is the complaint, says the trooper claimed that he could smell the odor of marijuana. So they made a big deal out of it. They arrested him. They impounded the car. And, of course, they found absolutely nothing. This was simply a fishing expedition. This is why you don't want to have metadata being looked at by the government on everybody. These kinds of out-of-control false positives that we see with this, this is what they can do with everything in your life. This is a very old-school kind of a, instead of a meta tag, uh, it's actually a license plate tag that they pulled him over on. And be aware of the fact, as we pointed out here at InfoWars, Homeland Security was caught trying to set up a database of license plates 
We've also seen the Navy looking at everyone's license plates with their database. And of course, once we exposed that, Homeland Security pulled that back and said, no, we're not going to, uh, we're not going to request that. We, they, they pulled back that request to fund that database. But then we also saw the very same day a Wired Magazine story that IBM and Cisco were competing to create a literal information highway where they could not only look at your license plate tag, but they could basically look at everything that you're, they're going to provide you internet as you're driving down the road, but they're going to totally profile everything about you. They're going to be watching everything as you move, not just your location, but where you're surfing. They're going to record your license plate data. This is a government that is totally out of control. This is a government that has to know everything about us, and it's, it's absolutely beyond control. People are starting to push back against this, and I think one of the things that highlights this is that Mike Rogers, who has been the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, he's been one of the big cheerleaders for the NSA and this police surveillance state, along with Dianne Feinstein, a Democrat and a Republican, and they both love it. Well, it looks like he's not going to be running for re-election. Instead, he's going to be heading to talk radio. That's right. He's going to be the new voice for the system. Now, the question is, is he going as part of a, an expanded Operation Mockingbird? You know, that was the CIA's way to get control of the press. They actually had a name for it to try to get people into the press to sway public opinion. And we know that they do that constantly. We're going to be talking about how they do that with the false flag that was exposed in Turkey. But he might have also been leaving because people are turning against what he's doing. Listen to this. Now, this is from the political wire. And what they're saying is when they reported this, they said that his 8th district is currently rated a safe Republican district. But without him, it could be competitive. Mitt Romney carried the district by three points in 2012. Obama won it by six points in 2008. So it may be that he's not in such a safe seat after all. So this might be a smart move for him to get out while he can before he gets thrown out. Imagine what a black eye that would be in the face of the surveillance state if their biggest cheerleader got voted out. They don't want to see that happen. So he's going to go to talk radio. And there you're going to see him pushing the same kinds of dangerous ideas about the surveillance state as well as war. Of course, these are the kinds of people who not only love to spy on us and try to create a battlefield on the streets of America, putting tanks in the hands of the police, militarizing the police. But they also want to have war in every corner of the globe. And of course, Mike Rogers is one of those people. It'd be very embarrassing for them if they lost. You know, I kind of think he's, he and, uh, he and Dianne Feinstein are kind of the uh, Tokyo Rose and the Tokyo Rogers of the information war, I think. They're the, uh, the lying people out there who are trying to push the population one way. And I think a large part of the surveillance state is a way to close the loop and see if you're actually buying their propaganda. Remember, it's just a few months ago that the, the Defense Department, uh, one young lady stood up and said, you know, they're not buying what we're telling them anymore. They think it's just a bunch of clumsy propaganda. And that's right. We don't buy that anymore. Look who else is stepping down. We've got Keith Alexander stepping down. At a ceremony this weekend, he ended his nine-year ten tenure at the NSA and his 40-year military career and said he's going to be retiring. I don't know if he's going to go to radio or <laughs> what he's going to do. It's absolutely amazing. And we can see the heights of some of this stuff. Look at this story here from the Washington Post. It's called Franz Kafka Meets the National Security Agency. And what it is is a story about uh, a son who tried to get information about his father who was illegally wi wiretapped by the CIA in 1963. And he talks about how he was pretty much stonewalled by the NSA and by other agencies. It turned out, he said, that the FBI was the one that was the most forthcoming. The NSA totally stonewalled him. And this is what was interesting, is what the NSA Freedom of Information Act officer said. Now... Keep in mind, this is her job, to provide information under FOIA, for FOIA requests, okay? There is a law, Freedom of Information Act, that says that they must supply information under certain circumstances. But she says, as a result of my review, I've concluded that the appropriate response is to continue to neither confirm nor deny the existence or non-existence of any intelligence material on your father. This is back in 1963.